أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now the first verse أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون Allah says for mankind their reckoning draws close while they turn away heedless. You look at the first word in this ayah, it should sound, it, it's, it, should be fam, it should look familiar to those who have, who know a little bit about the Arabic language. The word iqtaraba comes from the word qaruba, which means to be close. But here you have the word qaruba, qaf, ra, and ba. But the verse says iqtaraba. So you have a hamza, and then you have a ta between the qaf and the ra. So there is an increase in the letters. So we're, we added two letters to the root. In the Arabic language, there is a, a linguistic principle. That says, إِذَا زَادَ الْمَبْنَى زَادَ الْمَعْنَى That when we add letters to a root, the meaning, so increasing the structure, meaning increasing the number of letters, indicates an additional meaning that we're adding to the original root word. So قَرُبَ means something that's very close. Iqtaraba, because of those letters that we're adding to the root, to the root word, it means that we're also adding meaning. We're adding further meaning to the word qaruba. And here, the meaning of iqtaraba is that iqtaraba means something that's extremely close. So not only is it close, it's extremely close, and the verb iqtaraba signifies that one is closer to one's destination than to one's origin. It signifies that one is closer to one's destination than to one's origin. So iqtaraba linnasi hisabuhum that the that the reckoning of people not only is it close, it is extremely close. Meaning, we are closer to the end of times that, than we are to the beginning of, of the story of man. So if you look at the timeline of the creation of, of, of human being, of Bani Adam. So Adam, and then you have Yom Al-Qiyamah. We are closer to the end than we are to the beginning. That is encapsulated just in the word iqtaraba. Now, even the Prophet ﷺ, and, and you know, brothers and sisters, when we think of the Day of Judgment, even if we don't admit it, on a subconscious level, we think of the Day of Judgment as, as a distant reality. That's, it's something that's going to happen when, when, in the distant future. But here, there is a warning. Don't be deluded into thinking that the day of reckoning and the most important part of, of the day of judgment is the hisab. So we think of the day of judgment as being some distant event, something that's going to happen in the distant future. Now the Prophet lived 1400 years ago. There is a famous hadith from the Prophet, and it's recorded in the books of Ahlul Sunnah and also in the books of the followers of Ahlul Bayt. The Prophet himself, he says, That me, I was sent, and the day of judgment, my sending, my prophetic mission, and the day of judgment are like this. And he did this with his fingers, with his index finger and his middle finger. Kahatain, meaning 
it's very close. No matter what you do, you can't really separate the index finger too far from the middle finger. Even if you try to separate them, they're very close. So 1,400 years ago, the prophet was saying that, that my prophetic mission is a sign that the day of judgment is very close. In fact, one of the names of the prophet is that he is known as, especially the ancient prophets, they used to refer to Rasulullah as Nabi Akhir Zaman, that he is the prophet of the end of times. If Rasulullah is referred to as Nabi Akhir Zaman, how much closer are we to the day of judgment? Or even closer. Now, there's a hadith from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam where he narrates from Nabi Isa, Jesus, son of Mary. This is a great messenger of God. He says, قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمْ لِجِبْرَائِيلِ مَتَى قِيَامُ السَّاعَةِ Isa alayhi salam, he asks Jibra'il, when is the day of judgment? You see that the day of judgment was something that preoccupied the minds of prophets. That there was there was this concern about the day of judgment. Isa alayhi salam is asking that when is this day going to happen? Now, so Isa is asking Jibrail, when is the day of judgment? Do you know, brothers and sisters, how? Jibra'il reacted to that question because Jibra'il is an angel. Jibra'il is, you know, he, he, he has much more access to Ilmul Ghayb than we do. He's the, the archangel. The hadith from Imam al Sadiq says, Fantafada Jibra'il untifadatan ughmiya alayhi minha. When Isa السلام, asks Jibra'il, when is the day of judgment? The moment Jibra'il hears Qiyamu Sa'a, when he hears about the day of judgment, Imam al-Sadiq says Jibra'il began to tremble until he fainted. Can you imagine? Jibra'il, because Jibra'il knows the reality of Yawm al-Qiyam. He fainted. The hadith says, Falamma afa." When he regained consciousness, قَالَ يَا رُوحَ اللَّهِ Jibra'il says, O Spirit of God, which was one of the, the honorific titles of, of uh, Isa. مَا الْمَسْؤُولُ أَعْلَمُ بِهَا مِنَ السَّائِلِ He says, the, the questioner does not know more. The one who is being questioned, meaning me, does not know more than the questioner. Meaning that I, I don't know. I, just as you don't know when the Day of Judgment is, even Jibra'il says, I don't know. But Jibra'il says, there is one thing that I do know. That I know that God controls and He owns everything in the heavens and the earth. There is one thing that I do know about the Day of Judgment. لا تأتيكم إلا بغتتان. What I do know about the Day of Judgment is that it will take people by surprise. It will take them by surprise. People will think that it's something that's going to happen in the distant future, but لا تأتيكم إلا بغتتن. So Allah says, اقترب للناس اقترب للناس حسابهم That their reckoning, meaning the hisab, is not for Allah. Allah doesn't benefit from reckoning, from taking you to account. And by the way, the word hisab, you know, hisab does, you know, in colloquial Arabic, his, you know, hisab means, you know, accounting, to take count. But that's not what the word hisab means. You know, to counting something means adda. Hisab, or, you know, ihsa, ihsa is to, to enumerate or to count. 
on the day of judgment, Allah is not going to just count your deeds where, okay, you have, you know, 5,000 good deeds and you have 2,000 sins, therefore you go to Jannah. That's not the type of accounting we're talking about. It's not like, you know, balancing your checkbook where you're taking, you know, that's not the accounting that we're talking about. A better word, a better modern word for hisab is audit. This is a divine audit. So not only are, is God going to count the good deeds and the evil deeds, it's going to be a full comprehensive audit of your life. You know, just as you know, when you get audited by the IRS, you don't just show them numbers. You have to show receipts. They dig very deep. So hisab is reckoning. It's a very deep, very nuanced, comprehensive accounting. And because of that, you know, when I was uh, during the month of Ramadan, I met a uh, I met a brother, and he looked very nervous one of the nights of Ramadan. And I asked him, "What's you seem, you seem a bit anxious today?" And he told me, "Sheikh, I have I got a speeding ticket." And I have a court date next week. And I'm very nervous about standing in front of the judge. And when he said this to me, I thought to myself, subhanAllah, look at how nervous, how much anxiety this person has because he has to stand for hisab in front of another human being. Not about his entire life, just, just about a few moments when he was driving. How much anxiety you have. This is a human being standing for hisab with another human being regarding a few seconds or a few minutes of your life when you are driving. How about when you stand, and it's not a human judge where Allah is the judge now, that this is a hisab, this is a hisab where God is the judge. How much? Anxiety, how much, how much, how much, how concerned should you be about that, about that trial? That's why Amir al Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, السلام, describing the reckoning of the Day of Judgment, he says, that is the day, Amir al-Mu'mineen says, in which God will gather the foremost generations and the later generations. No one is exempt from this hisab. And that's why, you know, going to Hajj is so important. Going for ziyarah during Arba'een is so important. Because how often do you get to see millions of people? This is a, a small... You know, it's almost like a simulation of Yom Al Qiyamah to just be in the sea of people. The day of judgment is what? It's a day of reckoning and it's a day of recompense. And then the Imam describes the peep the condition of people when they are being judged. <laughs> they are humbled. They are in awe. There's 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 no such thing as an arrogant person on the day of judgment. Everyone is humbled by virtue of the, the terror of that day. Qiyama, standing. There's no sitting. There's no, there are no chairs. You know, sometimes you go to the masjid and they have chairs, especially in the musalla, and people sit on the chairs. And, you know, because some people, they can't stand. So there are some people, when, when it's the time of salah, all of a sudden he can't stand. If, when there's soccer outside, mashallah, he's, he regained his youth. There's no sitting, standing. On the day of judgment, the Imam السلام, he says that people will be shoulder to shoulder. There's no room cramped, and people are going to be sweating. And the sweat is not going to fall on the earth because you know the sweat from your head and your neck is going to accumulate on your shoulders. And the narrations say that it will reach your earlobes. It's going to be like a pool of sweat above your shoulders because the, sh the shoulders of people are so mushed and crammed 
that even the sweat is not going to be able to trickle down because of how crowded it is on the Day of Judgment. And the earth is trembling below them. Imam Amir al muminin he says, the person who is in, in the best condition on the day of reckoning, on the day of judgment, is the one who has feet, has space to plant his feet. If you can plant your feet on the earth on the day of judgment, alhamdulillah, you're VIP. That's very good. And if you can have some room to breathe, it's a difficult day, brothers and sisters. It's not a day that we should take lightly. That's why Amir al muminin even on the eve of his martyrdom, he was thinking about this hisab. You know, his daughter, Umm Kulthum, on the night of his shahada, she brings for as his iftar barley bread, salt, and some yogurt. Amir al muminin alayhi salam, he looks at her with anger and he says to her that I never thought a daughter would do this to her father. Um Kulthum, the daughter of Amir al muminin she says, Oh my father, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? He says, Why did you put so much food on this tray? Do you want to prolong my hisab on the day of judgment? Allahu Akbar. If, if, if Amir al muminin is worried about his hisab, if that is going to prolong our hisab, how is that day going to be for us? That everything is going to be taken into account. Every morsel of food that you ate, every step you took, every word that you uttered, every thought that crossed your mind, everything is going to be taken into account. Now when it comes to hisab, so Allah says, اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ The reckoning of the people is extremely close. Now. On the Day of Judgment, there are many different ways to categorize people. But if you look at the Qur'an, there are four, we can divide people into four groups based on the type of hisab they will receive, depending on the type of reckoning and accounting they will receive. There are some people, my dear brothers and sisters, on the Day of Judgment, they are so righteous, they are so beloved to Allah, that for them there's no hisab, meaning that they come out of their graves and they're essentially escorted to paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, in Surah 39, verse 10, He says, Innama yuwaffa sabiruna ajrahum bighayr hisab. That the, the patient ones, now we have to ask ourselves, are we among as -sabirun? Are we patient in the face of calamity? Are we patient when it comes to ibadah? Are we patient when it comes to resisting uh, temptation? You have to ask yourself. Allah says we will give the patient ones their reward without hisab. Meaning that there are some groups of people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit them into paradise right away. Like a bolt of lightning, they'll be taken to paradise. So there are some, so there are righteous people who don't experience hisab. Allah grants them paradise immediately. There's also another group who are not given any hisab. They are not judged on the day of judgment. Allah says in Surah Al-Kaf, Surah 18, verse 105, Those who knowingly reject God and His signs, and they, they reject the notion of resurrection and returning to God. Their deeds are nullified, they're null and void. These people, these rebellious people, their deeds are void. Allah says, I'm not going to weigh their deeds, meaning there's no hisab. They come out of their grave straight to Jahannam. 
because if, if there are no good deeds what is there what is there to judge what uh, what what's the point of hisab if there are no good deeds so there are two groups there are some people they come out of their graves jannah immediately another group they go to jahannam immediately but the majority fall into the other two groups and this is captured in a narration from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, Inna Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala idha arada an yuhasib al-mu'min a'atahu kitabahu biyameenin. When Allah wishes to judge, to take a believer to, to account, He gives him his book in his right hand. Wahasabahu fima wa baynahu wa baynahu. And God will judge him. He will take him to account privately. Meaning that Allah is not going to expose the mu'min's sins on the Day of Judgment. It will be a private hisab. فَيَقُولُ abdi. So Allah will say to this mu'min on the Day of Judgment, فَعَلْتَ كَذَا وَكَذَا وَعَمِلْتَ كَذَا وَكَذَا oh, oh my servant, you did this and that. You... You perform this action and that action. You committed this sin and that sin. And this mu'min will say, Na'am, Ya Rab, yes, my Lord, I did that. I admit it. Allah will say to the mu'min, فَيَقُولْ قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لك. I forgive you. وَأَبْدَلْتُهَا حَسَنَاتِ And I will convert your sins into good deeds. فَيَقُولُ nas People will say, Subhanallah. أَمَا كَانَ لِهَذَا الْعَبْدِ سَيِّئَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ People, because this person's sins are not broadcasted on the Day of Judgment, people will say that, SubhanAllah, glory be to God. Does this person not have a single sin? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hisab for the mu'mineen on the Day of Judgment will be private. Allah will honor, protect their dignity. He's not going to expose them. And, and this is... Imam al-Sadiq says, وَهُوَ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ And this is what Allah means in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Inshiqaq, Surah 84, verses 7 to 8. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا This is the meaning of الْحِسَابُ الْيَسِيرُ An easy reckoning. So when we mention the thawab of reading Surah Al-Anbiya, one, one of the rewards was, that Allah hasabahu Allah hisaban yasira. That God will will make your reckoning easy. The meaning of that is that God will privately judge you when he when he interrogates you about your sins. It will be one on one. It's not going to be mentioned in front of all people. And then the Imam says, "Inna Allah tabaraka wa taala idha arad bi abdin sharran." If Allah wants to be severe with his servant, If Allah wants to be severe in his reckoning, he judges the person in front of everyone. Meaning, sin by sin, Allah will expose it in front of all of the people on the Day of Judgment. Can you imagine how humiliated you would be if the community found out about a private sin that you commit, you wouldn't leave your house. You would probably move. You would, your reputation would be destroyed. That's if one sin is broadcasted in your community. What if all of your sins are presented in front of all of mankind? What would happen to you? That's why Imam al-Sadiq says people are going to start crying. These sinful people, they're going to cry from humiliation on that day. And then the Imam says, وَعَطَاهُ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِ And their, their book of deeds will be given behind their back because they're embarrassed to show it. You know, have you seen people in school? You know, the A, the A students, they show their grades to others. But the guy, the, the guy or the girl who gets a D or an F, they fold the exam and they put it in their pocket. They hide it. They put it in their back pocket. They're embarrassed. And then the Imam says, وَهُوَ قَوْلُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ 
فَسَوْفَ يَدْعُوْ ثُبُورًا وَيَصْلَى سَعِيرًا So verses 10 to 12 of Surah 84, Surah Al-Inshiqah. So it gives us a contrast between Al-Hisabu uh, Al-Yaseer and Al-Hisabu Al-Aseer. اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ So this, this day of judgment, this day of reckoning is imminent. It's a looming hour of reckoning. Now what is the state of people? A, ra a rational person would be worried. It would, a person would be concerned. He would, he would prepare if you were a rational person. But what, what is the state of people? With respect to the day of judgment, that people are heedless, they've turned away. Now, Allah uses the word ghafla. Ghafla, brothers and sisters, is the opposite of dhikr, it's the opposite of being mindful. Ghafla means to be disconnected. To be cut off from reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want us people, doesn't want us to be people of ghafla. He doesn't want us to be heedless. And you know, brothers and sisters, in this in this verse, two things are mentioned regarding the state of people in relation to the day of judgment, the hisab, ghafla and i'raf. Because even mu'mineen, even believers who believe in the Day of Judgment, many of them, they believe in the Day of Judgment theoretically. We have a theoretical belief in the Day of Judgment. But practically, it's not manifested in our behavior. If you really believe that the Day of Judgment is drawing extremely close, that needs to be reflected in your conduct. But what's the problem? The problem is ghafla. We're heedless. That our hearts are preoccupied with worldly things. We, we have deluded ourselves into thinking that we're going to live 50, 60, 70 years. وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ and one of the ways, so people may have people have different levels of ghafla. So there are some people who are so heedless that they abandon their obligations. There are some people who fulfill their obligations, but they might experience moments of ghafla, and that's why they fall into sin. It's impossible to be fully mindful of God. To be truly in a state of dhikr and do something that is going to be destructive to your hereafter. Ghafla. And one of the ways, one of the institutions that Allah has established to take us out of ghafla is salah. Allah tells Musa in the Quran, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ Establish prayer for my remembrance. So you're not among the people of ghafla. And the prayer itself has many powerful references to the Day of Judgment, to the uh, the hereafter. There are some people, not only are they heedless of the hereafter, they are mu'ridun. Mu'ridun is even worse than ghafla. I'rad means to, to turn away, to not even be concerned about something that you 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 turn away from something you reject it you know if you think of ghafla and i'rad as two people who are sleeping right someone who is actually sleeping you can wake them up right so someone might be in a state of ghafla they're heedless and they hear a reminder they hear an admonishment and they can wake up that's why it's important for us to go to the masjid, go to Friday prayer, because we need that mawadah. We need to take ourselves out of this state of ghafla. And without salah, that's why Allah has mandated the five daily prayers. Because Allah is taking us out of that state of ghafla. 
to a state of mindfulness through the prayer. So ghafla is like someone who's sleeping and someone who's sleeping can be awakened. But you can't wake up someone who's pretending to sleep. Someone who's pretending to sleep doesn't want to wake up. And this is the meaning of mu'aridun. They, they turn away. So I'll conclude with this, uh, this final hadith as we're at the end of our, uh, our session. That we, we, have to, we have to keep in mind that this verse is communicating a very important reality. And that is that the day of judgment is actually something that is very close. It's imminent. And it's a day in which we will be audited by God about everything. Our deeds will be fully audited. There will be a full audit of every moment of our lives. And the problem is that you have this serious consequential day and people are drowning in this sea of heedlessness. This There's this negligence. And we have to remember that that this ghafla is dangerous. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this day of judgment is coming and you're in a state of ghafla, you're in a state of i'rab. There's one final hadith that I'll end with. On the day of judgment, and this is something, you know, these types of ahadith are meant to make us mindful, to make us people who are mindful of the hereafter and not people of ghafla. The hadith from the Prophet says, لا يزال قدم ابن آدم حتى يسأل عن أربع. On the day of judgment, the Prophet says, you will not be able to move your feet unless you are questioned about four things. There are many stations on the day of judgment. One of the stations, there's, there are four questions that will be posed. يُسْأَلُ عَنْ أَرْبَعَ You'll be asked about four things. عَنْ عُمْرِهِ فِيمَا أَفْنَا You will be asked about your life and how you spent it, about your time. What did you do with your time? How did you spend this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you? وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِيمَا أَبْلَا And specifically, you will be asked about your youth when you had all of this energy, this vigor. What did you do with, with your youth? This age of productivity, Allah gave you all of this energy, these capabilities. You will be asked about your youth and how you spent it. You will be asked about your wealth, where you got it from. Right? Sometimes we don't we don't ask that question. We're always thinking about how we're going to spend our money. Where did you get your money? And how you spent it. And then finally, And then you will be asked about your knowledge. And what did you do with this knowledge? How did you apply it? Did you just gain knowledge just so you can impress people? Did you study Surah Al-Anbiya just so you can check it off the list? What did you do with this, this knowledge? So these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the things that are part of our hisab. And we have to be mindful of it, my dear brothers and sisters, so we are not among the people of ghafla. Inshallah, we'll continue with ayah number two of Surah Al-Anbiya next week. This concludes our session. Inshallah, we'll leave uh, a few minutes uh, for Q&A. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al So um, on the, the reckoning, uh, portion. Uh, can the reckoning growing in, can that also apply to people on an individual basis that uh, our reckoning is closer than we think it is? So, so, so that that's a that's so a very that's, that's a very good question, and uh, because some scholars have understood the the expression of اقتربا للناس حسابهم as a reference to death. Because we have a hadith that say that when you're 
when, when you die, your hisab begins. Because there's a hisab for barzakh as well. So there's a, a pre-hisab that comes before the hisab of the Day of Judgment. So iqtaraba lil-nasi hisabuhum. Some ulama, some of the mufassirin have understood this to be a reference to death. That your death is a lot closer than you think it is. And when you die, the hisab of barzakh begins. So your hisab begins. And then you have the official hisab of, uh, of the Day of Judgment. So yeah, that's, that's an excellent point. Some scholars have actually uh, maintained that the, the hisab here is, uh, could include either means death or could also reference uh, the concept of death.